Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. We've got some cool new solid state drives here from Solidime. So we've got a couple models here. We've got the P41 Plus and the P44 Pro. And we have a one terabyte and a two terabyte version of each one. Now these are both PCIe 4.0. Uh, PCIe 5.0 is, uh, we should see it here before long. I don't know if any of it's really out in the wild yet. I haven't seen any, but uh, rest assured when we do get some, you will get to see them. Anyway, these are both PCIe 4.0. And uh, if you look here, it says up to 4,100 megabytes a second on the P41 Plus. It's the same on both, uh, both capacities. And on the P44 Pro, it says up to 7,000 megabytes a second. Again, the same for both units here. And it's important to keep in mind that it says up to. Uh, this is where you usually use the your mileage will vary statement because there are a lot of things that can affect uh, the speeds, what kind of data you're moving, uh, where you're moving it to and from, things like that. But you can see speeds up to those numbers. And both of these models carry a five-year warranty. Uh, what I'll do here is I'll get the labels peeled off so we can sort of see what's going on uh, behind the labels on the back. Uh, they look the same between the two different versions. The only thing you can really tell the difference is this one is one terabyte and two terabyte. Very fine print on the label. But uh, I'll get the top label peeled off. Again, that's one terabyte and two terabyte. And uh, just a quick overview here. So these two here on the left are the P41s and these are the P44s. You can see they do look different. Now what's interesting is on the P41 unit here, this is the one terabyte. You can just see one chip. And this is the two terabyte. You can see two chips. But when we look at the P44, they look identical. The one terabyte and the two terabyte uh, appear to have the same chip count. So digging into it a little more deeply, I use my microscope here so I can sort of see what's going on uh, as I scan around and look at the two. What I notice is on the P41, so we've got a one terabyte unit here. It uses a single chip. And the way they achieve two terabytes is they use two one terabyte chips. Now on the P44, uh, we've got the same chip count, same layout, but what they've done here, it looks like we've got different chips between the one and two terabyte units. But really, at the end of the day, no one's really paying too much attention to uh, <laughs> the chips. Anyway, the system we'll be using, this is a new Z790 motherboard with a 13900K CPU. And uh, all of the slots here we'll be using are PCIe 4.0 capable. Okay, so I have all of the drives installed. The one up there at the top, the P41 Plus. That is actually in a PCIe 5.0 slot, but it will sense that it is a PCIe 4.0 device and then uh, adjust the speeds accordingly. And the system is fired up. Now I had to show those other two cards before I got the graphics card in there because this thing is massive. This is the new Supreme X from MSI. It is the RTX 4080, but it is large enough that it completely obscures the other two <laughs> solid state drives that are tucked away under there. You can only see the two that are in the front. All right, so we're ready to go. And a couple of things you want to do before you really start using your drives. You want to go to the Solidime uh, web page for these drives and you can download the uh, storage driver and you want to get that installed. And then the next thing is to also download the uh, Solidime storage tool. So there's the uh, uh, GUI for your Windows system. And looking at the tool here, the uh, storage tool, uh, and actually over here in the settings in the upper, far upper right, I'm actually off the screen there. Where is it? There we go. So over here in the settings, you can go dark or light. I actually like the dark theme, but this is very useful. So you can really drill down into what's going on with your drive. So you've got, uh, actually first here is the summary. So you can look at the basic information for your drives. You've got firmware updates, so you can look at your uh, firmware, make sure you've got the latest version. There's a diagnostic scan, secure erase, performance booster. It looks like that only applies to the P41. There's also a 
uh, section here for host managed cache. It looks like that also only applies to your P41 uh, identify. So you can click that and you can really dig down into some information on each one of your drives. So there's the P41. Let's look at one of the uh, other drives. There's the P44. So you can really dig down, way down, <laughs> way down. And then uh, here's the smart information. Again, you can look at this uh, smart information for each drive. So this is a very useful tool. All right, so now we'll take a quick look at the specifications between the two. I tried to squeeze everything in here so you can still read the text, but on this side is uh, the information for the P41, and this side is the information for the P44. So there are a few points of interest here. The main one, of course, are your read and write speeds, and the P44 uh, over here is the faster unit. So the P41, we're coming in at uh, on the one and two terabytes. We've got 4,125 megabytes a second on the read, and the write, and it's not unusual to have a different write speed uh, as your capacities go up, but on the uh, one terabyte, we've got 2,950 20, megabytes a second on the uh, right and 3,325 megabytes a second on the right for the two terabyte. 512 gigabyte is a little slower at uh, 1625 megabytes a second on the right and 3,500 on the read. Moving over to the P44, we've got 7,000 across the board on the reads, regardless of the capacity. Uh, on the uh, 512 on the writes, it's a little slower at 4,700 megabytes a second. And the one and uh, two terabyte units are both 6,500 megabytes a second uh, on the writes. Coming down here to, uh, let's see, endurance rating. This is sort of like the life expectancy in terms of how many times you can write to the drives or the, the volume of information you can write to it. And again, that's typically uh, uh, the larger the capacity, the larger the uh, terabytes written can be. So on the P41, on the 512 gigabyte, it's the lowest. It's 200, ter 200 terabytes written. Uh, on the 1 and 2 terabytes, we go with 400 and 800 terabytes written uh, between the two. So you can see we go up considerably uh, with the larger capacity. And on the P44, on the 512, we go from 500 terabytes written to 750 on the one terabyte and 1200 terabytes written on the two terabytes. So you can see again on the P44, the uh, life expectancy is greater. Now the mean time between failure is the same, 1.6 million hours uh, for each unit. And the only other thing here, uh, I was looking at the way they show the, the, the power usage and the footnotes here sort of talk about down below uh, how, this, how this is collected, how they rate the power usage, and they're considerably different here when you compare them, but on the P41, it doesn't really say if it's collecting it the same way or not, so I can't really compare those numbers because I don't know that they're collected or measured in the same way, so uh, I'll just have to keep moving on that one. All right, so we're running the synthetic benchmarks uh, using Crystal Disk Mark version 8.0.4, and I've got four uh, instances of it running. So on the left, these two are for the P41 1 and 2 terabyte, and this side here is the P44 1 and uh, 2 terabyte. Now, the synthetic benchmarks are what I use to sort of give me a feel for if the drives are performing anywhere near what the specifications show. And the other reason is if you just happen to have your drives plugged into the wrong slot, let's just say these, uh, there's a difference here, let's just say this was a uh, PCIe Gen 3 and this was a Gen 4. If I've got a Gen 4 solid state drive plugged into a Gen 3 slot, it'll still uh, function. It just won't function at the maximum speed. And you may not realize that at first because even at uh, a lower speed, at Gen 3 speeds, it's still reasonably fast. Okay, so looking at uh, the P41 here, so I'm looking at reads in the 4,000 range and writes in the roughly 3,000 range. So I come over here to the specification sheet and let's see, right over here. So I'm looking for again, 4,000 and roughly 3,000. And we're looking right here, one terabyte is 4,125, two terabyte is 4,125 on the read. And uh, we're right there, we're just, just a tick below that. And then again on the right, we're looking at uh, let's see, the right, we're looking at 2950 and 3325. So call that 3000 and roughly 3300. And when we come over here and look at what Crystal Disk Mark shows, and we've got 
uh, 3,000 and almost uh, a little over 3,300. So we are right in line on the P41 with what the specifications show. Now looking at the P44, of course this is quite a bit faster. So we're looking at a little over 7,000 and around 6,500 on the right. And uh, on the two terabyte, we're looking at roughly the same number. So one and two terabyte performance. If I come over here and look at the specifications, they should be pretty close to what we're seeing there. So if we look, get the camera in position. Okay, so again, we're looking at 7,000 on both for the read and uh, roughly 6,500 on the right. So 7,000, 6,500, we've got 7,000 on both and 6,500. This one actually the two terabytes a little bit faster than that. So the specifications check out with what the uh, synthetic benchmarks show. All right, so synthetic benchmarks are really good to uh, give you an indication of what the drive is capable of doing and whether or not it's uh, anywhere near what the specs say. But uh, real world performance is, uh, or usually is a little different. So I've got uh, four file explorers open here. I've got the P41, one and two terabyte, and the P44, one and two terabyte. I've got a folder with roughly seven gigabytes of just stuff in it, miscellaneous files. I've got uh, one large file here. This is actually a disk image, which is around 55, 56 gigabytes. Uh, that's one big file. And then we've got a zipped file here, which is around seven gigabytes. So uh, what I've been doing is just sort of moving them around from drive to drive to just sort of look at the performance. I don't really have anything else running. So let's do a quick copy and a paste. And this is from the P44 to the P41, both the two terabyte drives. And as it moves the smaller files, you, that's usually when you get to slower speeds, but we've already ramped up to about 2.5, 2.6, 2.8, 2.9, briefly. Uh, that's gigabytes a second, not gigabits, gigabytes. Looks like we're plateauing right around 2.6, 2.7 gigabytes a second. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now let's go ahead and go from the P41 two terabyte uh, over to the copy that over to the P41 one terabyte and we're doing the same sort of ramp up as we go through the small files first and a little slower than the transfer from the uh, P44. A little bit of a hiccup, but it looks like we're plateauing around two, a little over two. We get up to about 2.2, real close to it. Now, if you do this back and forth over and over, you will see varying results. It'll sort of uh, uh, move around a little bit. You'll see some really good numbers and you'll see some numbers that are maybe not quite as exciting. Now we'll go from the uh, P41 one terabyte over to the P44 one terabyte. <clears throat> and we should hit the plateau here pretty soon. Yeah, 2.36, 2.2, 2.8, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9,
you know if you do this back and forth you'll see variations uh, on your speeds so one thing I'll say here about the thermal characteristics so I'm stressing the drives here between uh, crystal disk and Addo uh, to put a load on them and then I watch the drive temperatures and the P41 seems to run a little cooler of course it's running at a much slower speed Whereas the uh, P44, when it's stressed, we're getting uh, 77C. The P41, uh, I saw it hit about uh, 50C a couple of times. There we are up to 80. And we just finished the uh, benchmarking there. So this number here should start coming down uh, after a, uh, you know, a minute or two for it to cool off. But the point being is the drives here uh, do not have any heat sinks on them so you want to use for example whatever comes with your motherboard so this is the set of heat sinks that would fit over that area uh, but really the most important thing is that you have airflow moving across your motherboard and normally when you're in a case you should have some airflow but that really goes a long way towards keeping your drives cool because if they get too hot they start to throttle and you lose uh, you lose performance so here we are we're coming down to 70 C uh, after it's had some time to cool off and this is normal behavior for these uh, these solid state drives. Uh, the other thing you have to watch out for, for example, and this is a good example, a large graphics card like this, which is dumping, uh, the bottom here is open, so the hot air that is being pushed out through the fin stack here is going right down on top of these two solid state drives. So airflow is good, but if you're stressing your graphics card and you're pushing hot air against your SSDs and you're stressing those at the same time, which I guess it's really unlikely that you're going to be maxing out uh, your graphics card and your solid state drives at the same time. But again, the whole point there is just to make sure you've got good airflow moving through your case, across your motherboard, and of course across your SSDs. All right, pricing. Of course, uh, Amazon and Newegg, you have to keep your eyes out for sales because the pricing changes from time to time. But the P41, one terabyte is right now $83.99. It looks like there's some kind of a small discount there. The two terabyte is 191.88. Again, that's the P41. The P44 is a little more expensive. The one terabyte is 129.99, and the two terabyte is 219.99. And that's pretty much in alignment with similar drives of uh, these speeds and capacities. So really, overall, I would give both of these the Overclockers Club Gold Award. Now, one thing here. Uh, if you've not heard of Solidyne before, and I've got to say I'd never heard of them, uh, it's because they're fairly recent. So earlier this year, actually end of last year and into this year, so Intel sold off their uh, SSD business and their NAND associated intellectual properties to SK Hynix. So uh, a new company was formed called Solidyne. So that's why if it doesn't seem familiar to you, uh, it's, it's very new. So... This is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>